Tensions between Marie and Angelica continue to rise. Angelica's supporters start burning Marie's things and ultimately drive the prince even closer to Marie. Maybe this could all come crashing down. While in the library, Leon and Olivia stumble across Marie kissing the purple-haired noble, Brad. This dude's name is Brad? Why isn't it like Alexander or Sebastian? Leon just walks into every unfavorable situation. Since he is even remotely close to Angelica, his sister is mad that he's going to ruin their family's reputation, as if they have one. It's not like Leon is even her friend, but if you stand against the prince, people turn on you pretty quickly. Somehow his first semester is already over. He's done literally nothing so far, but I like that we're moving along. For plot reasons, we have to go to a fancy party where Leon and his friends spend the night getting rejected. I thought being a rich explorer would get you some points, but apparently self-made successful men are gross. Speaking of gross, let's get back to Marie. Not only has she convinced the prince to dump Angelica, she is also all over his friends. When Angelica brings this up, they just admit to being her harem. They're acting out a telenovela. This love heptagon is getting messy. The school absolutely loves it though. I actually had to Google what a seven-sided shape was, so I was thinking hexagon, but it's a heptagon, you know, like hepatitis. Angelica doesn't like the sound of that, so oh shit, it's time for another genre change. Angelica challenges Marie to a duel for her fiancé. In the game, your highest friendship level character would fight for you. So who's going to fight for Marie? Oh, her entire harem. Who's fighting for popular girl Angelica? Literally no one, because women rule supreme in every situation but hers. Poor Angelica. If you turn against the prince, people turn on you pretty quickly, quickly, quickly. Not only that, in the game when Angelica loses, she moves to the middle of nowhere to marry a jerk and spends the rest of her life in misery. No pressure. Leon decides it's time to put the annoying Prince squad in their place, and just like Danny stepping up to Team Liquid and the Baron, he's ready to 2v6 this duel. With the odds at like 99 to 1, Leon is about to make a couple people very rich. Angelica tries to talk Leon out of fighting for her, but he's too set on embarrassing the nobles. On the day of the duel, Leon summons Mecha Zero Scion to battle the noble's Megazords. Leon's suit is named Aerogons because of his lovely personality trait. Only Leon's two friends bet on his horrible odds. With good reason too, his suit is lost technology, which in every piece of media I have ever seen means it's OP. But over here in Backwards Town, it means it's crappy old tech. Luckily, being backwards is the show's whole thing, so we have double negatived our way back into being an overpowered suit. The idea is that he will be slow and crappy versus a lot of fast and powerful suits. First up is Brad, the purple haired pretty boy whose suit should be called Narcissist. Yes, this joke is going to continue throughout the entire video. Brad unleashes a fury of spears and drones, but after one light hit is defeated. Oh, it's gonna be a short video today with only rapid fire mecha battles, at least Master is proud. Greg is up next, the red-haired noble with some adventuring experience. He looks down on elites who don't have any real-world experience like him. His suit should be called OVR Kompinst. Since it's just quick battles, I have almost nothing to talk about, so let's discuss how he embarrasses each noble. He defeats Brad in one hit, shattering his self-image as the perfect one. After defeating Greg, he taunts him by ripping apart his armor and makes Greg lose his temper. For a battle war noble hero who looks down on the cowardly, lashing out like that isn't the best look and the entire school sees that. Clearly Chris, the light blue one, is the scariest. Leon had trouble with him in the game and is worried about fighting him here too. His suit is called Coup Dependent. Chris is the son of a sword saint, so how does Leon humiliate him? He wears him down with drones, breaks his sword, and tells him to go cry about it to Marie so that maybe she'll pity him. Damn! No one's coming back from that. We take a little break before the next fight. Angelica and Olivia have something very important to say to Leon. During that important conversation, Jilk convinced Leon's sister to sabotage the match by placing bombs on Leon's suit. 
Jilk suit is one of the coolest looking ones and is named NFT because although popular, no one actually likes him. Leon's old piece of junk that has been backwards villed into a piece of god equipment survives the explosion and records Jilk threatening his family, exposing Jilk for the horrible person he is. I originally wanted to call his suit not the favorite since he's a foster child, but that was a little rude. With Jilk beaten, next episode sees the final match between Julius and his suit asshole, I mean as Shoal, versus Leon and Aragons. Having each fight end in a specific ego-shattering way was really fun, and I'm curious to see what the finisher will be for Julius. Leon name-dropped Olivia to Julius in this episode, so I wonder if he's going to try and correct the story of the game. We do learn for a fact that Marie is another player who got her brother to beat the game for her, which sounds a little too familiar to be what I think it is. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe for more, and make sure to like, comment, and share to help me out. There may be more videos coming soon that aren't the main three anime I'm covering, so keep an eye out. Bye.